well, if cultural evolution is so powerful and it shapes human nature so much, why don't we see cultural evolution in other species? And it turns out that, again, the, might, the answer might actually be in the psychology. It turns out that it seems like some of the proximate mechanisms that you might need for culture, things like imitating, you know, so I see you using your fork mm -hmm. some way, or I see David using chopsticks some way, and I imitate that and then take that to the next level and give it meaning and so on. Mm -hmm. Those types of very simple mechanisms don't seem to be the kind of thing that other primates can do very well. It seems like even though the old adage is that kind of monkeys see, monkey do, in fact, monkeys don't see and do. They, they just don't <laughs> seem to have the, uh, the, the wherewithal to kind of copy others, whereas humans do this to a fault. So there's this lovely study with uh, chimpanzees done by Andy White and his colleagues where they set up this little puzzle box for chimpanzees. And chimpanzees see this puzzle box, they don't actually know how to operate it. But if they were to see another human operate it, they could figure it out. They could say, oh, the human did this behavior and this behavior, I'm going to copy that exactly. Human children do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now you just change the situation. So the puzzle box is sort of obvious. It's clear, and it, it's very clear to the chimpanzee and to anyone who looks at it how the puzzle box works. And now I see you as a human do some kind of crazy thing on the puzzle box. I, as a chimpanzee, say, I'm a very smart chimpanzee. I'm just going to do what I'm supposed to do. Um, but you give the same problem to a human child, a three-year-old, and they'll watch what you do and do it exactly the incorrect way that you did it. So it's kind of this cultural mechanism for driving the kinds of behaviors that are seen rather than the ones that you can kind of figure out on your own. So in, in terms of thinking of the balance of these kind of mechanisms, you might have mechanisms that say, well, I understand how physics works. I'm just going to sort it out. Versus I have mechanisms that say a good thing to do is to copy what I see others do. And it seems like humans err on that side. Yeah. But, but the power of that sort of mechanism actually allows for this kind of cultural learning that we see robustly in but, but there are other right. animals. There are other animals that, that do what you sort of, uh, mm -hmm. by unexpert eye, yep. what you said humans do. And, and the classic example I can think of is the song sparrow. Mm -hmm. And when a baby sparrow is raised in isolation, it has this little primitive song. In order to learn the full song of the adult, it has to be exposed to other adults singing the right song. Right. And if it's only exposed, to the songs of adults of another species. It will develop a defective song. So in that sense, it's sort of pre-programmed to acquire a particular song. And there's some very clever experiments in which baby song sparrows re reared in isolation are presented with four songs from different species. And they have the capability to hear their species song, imitate it, and learn a full song properly. Yeah. Now, d d doesn't that fall into the kind of imitation that you're talking well, about with respect to the, humans? The, 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 the idea is that if you had a kind of little sort of toggle switch on how much imitation you would do, that the human toggle switch you know, falls at 11, as it were. We're just so influenced by the kinds of behaviors that we see in others mm -hmm. that we're uh, really robustly able to imitate them and really have a drive to imitate them in, in a way that maybe other animals don't. Mm -hmm. Perhaps save songbirds, but at least across primates, you just don't see the kind of imitation that you see in humans.